Video games are full of strong characters. Kratos, Master Chief, Kirby the Sentient Whoopee Cushion. But when it comes to raw physical strength, there is one character who eclipses them all. And his name is Steve. Now, I'm willing to bet that a lot of you aren't actually all that surprised by this. I mean, this is a man who can carry around an entire strip mine in his pocket. So I think most people will agree that Minecraft's Steve is pretty strong. Maybe the strongest character in any video game. But I'm here to tell you that however strong you think Steve is, he's magnitudes stronger than that. For you see, while there have been others in the past who have tried to quantify Steve's strength, based on my calculations, none of them even come close. Steve is far stronger than any video game character before him, and perhaps strong enough to destroy reality itself. Today, we get a definitive scientific answer to the question. How strong is Minecraft Steve? Richard, hit that intro. For all two of you who haven't played Minecraft yet, the main reason why Steve is so strong is because he can carry a lot of stuff. In the game, you have 36 spaces in your inventory that you can use to carry any object in the game. Certain items like tools and armor take up a slot all on their own, but the vast majority of blocks and objects can stack, meaning that each slot can hold 64 individual items of the same type. At 64 blocks per slot and 36 slots, that's a total of 2,304 items that Steve can carry. That's an absolutely insane number of blocks to cram in your pockets, but believe it or not, we can do even better. There's an item in the game known as a shulker box, which is basically like a portable chest. Each shulker box has 27 slots that you can fill with item stacks, and once it's full, you can break the box and carry it and all those items around yourself. Now, unfortunately, you can't stack full shulker boxes, but even still, that means that Steve can carry a total of 36 shulker boxes, each containing 27 stacks of 64 blocks for a grand total of 62,208 items. Carrying that many cotton balls would be impressive, but if we want to find the true limit of Steve's strength, then our next step is pretty simple. We just need to find the heaviest stackable block in Minecraft. After doing some research, it turns out that the heaviest naturally occurring block type in Minecraft is gold. In real life, gold has a density of 19,300 kilograms per meter cubed. Assuming that each block in Minecraft is one meter cubed in volume, even though you could make the argument that they're microscopic, that means that each gold block has a mass of 19,300 kilograms or 42,549 pounds. And remember, Steve is capable of carrying around 62,208 gold blocks at once, meaning that an inventory full of gold is gonna weigh one billion, 200 million, 614,400 kilograms, or 2.6 billion pounds. And just for fun, at the current price of around $85,000 per kilogram of gold, that's a cool $102 trillion, or roughly a quarter of all the world's wealth. Not too shabby. Now, this is assuming that the weight of the shulker boxes themselves is negligible, which, to be honest, compared to the 73 million pounds of gold inside each one, they are. 
So yeah, Steve is pretty freaking strong. And we're just getting started. While gold may be the heaviest naturally occurring element in Minecraft, it's not the heaviest block. In fact, it's far from it. But then, what is? Could it be the mysterious redstone? The hellish netherrack? One of the three billion wood types? No, it turns out that in a game with hundreds of fantastic metals and materials, the heaviest block in the game is an ice cube. In real life, ice has a density of 917 kilograms per meter cubed. Again, assuming that Minecraft's block is a meter long, that means that one ice block has a mass of 917 kilograms. Heavy, to be sure, but far from what we calculated for gold. But if you head over to your crafting table, you'll find that you can combine nine ice blocks together to get a new item called packed ice. Now, we're gonna assume that this block is exactly what it says and is simply nine ice blocks packed together into a one meter cube. In other words, we're not losing any ice in the crafting process. Realistically, it's very possible that some ice is being shaved off, but it's more fun this way. That means that one packed ice will simply have the mass of nine ice blocks. But wait, there's more. Because if you combine nine packed ice blocks together, then you can get blue ice. If we have nine ice blocks per packed ice and nine packed ice per blue ice, that means that a single block of blue ice contains a mass of 81 ice blocks, putting it at 74,277 kilograms per block. That's nearly four times heavier than gold and puts the final mass for a full inventory of blue ice at 4,620,623,616 kilograms or just over 10 billion pounds. That's the equivalent of carrying around the Great Pyramid of Giza in your pocket. I don't know a single other video game character that could do that and yet, we're not done yet. See, if you look up the heaviest block in Minecraft, you'll probably come across blue ice. I've seen a lot of people use this figure and come up with this final mass, only there's one problem. They're all wrong. Blue ice isn't actually the heaviest block in Minecraft. There is one block craftable in the modern day game that is heavier than blue ice. And somewhat anticlimactically, it's probably the one a lot of you are thinking of. Netherite was the fancy new upgrade to diamond equipment added in version 1.16. Now, obviously the ultra strong metal mined from hell is not a real material. So we can't simply look up its density to find out how much one netherite block weighs. For this one, we're gonna have to dig a little deeper. Pun definitely intended. A single netherite ingot can be crafted using four gold ingots and four netherite scrap. We know that you can craft nine gold ingots together to create a gold block. So we can simply divide our mass for a single gold block from earlier by nine to find that a single gold ingot weighs 2,144.44 kilograms. Way heavier than they look. Netherite scrap can be obtained from smelting a block of ancient debris, which again, doesn't exist. Or at least we don't know what it is and therefore don't know its density. Now, this is where a lot of other people stop. Because there's no way to know for sure how heavy a netherite scrap is, most people will simply ignore it, assume it's weightless, and say that one netherite ingot weighs the same as four gold ingots. That's why many lists will have a netherite block listed as the second heaviest block in the game, but I think we can do a bit better than that. We may not know the exact weight of an ancient debris block, but if we can find a real world material with similar properties, then we can get a pretty good estimate. So what are some of the properties of ancient debris? Well, on a surface level, we know that they are dark brown to black in color. 
They are also some of the few blocks in the game that are immune to explosions, meaning they must have a high thermal shock resistance and be very strong. And lastly, we know that when refined, they can be used to make very durable armor and tools. And after doing some research, it turns out that there is one real world material that fits this bill exactly. Silicon carbide, also known as carborundum, is a ceramic that is famous for having an exceptionally high thermal shock resistance, meaning it is capable of absorbing dramatic changes in temperature from, say, an explosion? It's also comparable to diamond in terms of hardness, and it's commonly used as plates in bulletproof vests or as cutting tips in high-end drill bits and cutters for similar reasons to diamond like we learned in the diamond pickaxe video. Silicon carbide is a naturally occurring material found commonly in crashed ancient meteors, but it is quite rare, so most of what we have today is synthetic. Oh yeah, and it's brown to black in color. A perfect match. Silicon carbide is actually pretty light compared to a lot of other materials, with a density of just 3,200 kilograms per meter cube. I'm going to assume that an ancient debris block is pure silicon carbide, and when you smelt it down, it all gets condensed into the netherite scrap. This probably isn't exactly true. If it's debris, then there's probably some other heavier materials mixed in there, but without an exact way to quantify it, this is the best we can do. If anything, we're probably selling Steve a tad bit short, but we'll be close enough. Anyway, that would mean that each netherite scrap weighs 3,200 kilograms. So, going back to our crafting recipe from before, one netherite ingot is comprised of four netherite scrap, each weighing 3,200 kilograms, or around 7,000 pounds, and four gold ingots, each weighing 2,144 kilograms, or 4,700 pounds. If you then combine nine netherite ingots together, you can get a netherite block, which, doing all the math, would weigh 192,420 kilograms, over twice as much as blue ice. If you then fill all 62,208 possible inventory slots with netherite blocks, then Steve will be packing a grand total of 11 billion 970,063,360 kilograms, over 13 million tons. That's insanely strong, incomprehensibly strong, perhaps even too strong. Perhaps the only thing more impressive than Steve's raw power is the fact that he's able to fit all this stuff on his person. I mean, this guy has somehow managed to cram 24 Olympic swimming pools worth of heavy stone into a space of only two blocks. And the more cosmically inclined among you might be curious. When you cram too much material into a small enough space, it will create a black hole. An object with a gravitational field so strong that not even light can escape it. So. Only one question remains. Would cramming nearly 12 billion kilograms of netherite into the space of only one Steve be enough to create a black hole and doom the Minecraft world to a crushing death? Well, in order to find out if a given amount of mass will form a black hole, you need to calculate its Schwarzschild radius. If that amount of mass is compressed into a sphere with a radius less than this, then it will form a black hole. Finding it is actually pretty simple. You just need to multiply your mass by twice the gravitational constant, which is always equal to this number, and then divide that by the speed of light squared. So all we need to do is plug in our mass and find that in order for our full netherite inventory to form a black hole, it would need to be condensed to a sphere with a radius of 1.7 times 10 
to the negative 17 meters, or around 47 times smaller than a single proton. I don't know how small Steve's pockets are, but I can say for certain that they're not that small. So, there you have it. Minecraft Steve is able to carry around 13 million tons without breaking a sweat. And he doesn't even have to risk creating a black hole to do it. And hey, Jack Black, you best start hitting the gym, buddy, because lore accurate Steve's out here bench pressing pyramids with ease. And hey, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, let me know what other video game physics quandaries you want me to talk about in the future. I've got a new video out on the channel every single Friday, so if you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button and hopefully I'll pop up in your recommended page more often. Huh. I feel like I usually, these videos end with some sort of insane bit, but uh, I don't know, this outro seemed pretty tame for once. I don't know, I guess I'll just... <coughs> And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby.